Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is the uh, final training class for this uh, 2016 Transmart Foundation training program. Uh, today, we will uh, this class will go into an introduction to the Transmart platform. My name is Rudy Potenzone from the Transmart Foundation, and our trainer will be Elena Fedorovich from uh, Rancho Biosciences. Uh, our training program uh, has gone on the entire year. We've trained uh, over 200 people uh, covering uh, several different topics, including a number of uh, basic classes, but also getting into some uh, advanced workflows and some data loading topics. Uh, and we conclude with our final um, class this today uh, to cover the basics again of the platform. We will continue the training program next year, uh, so you can look forward to a whole new set of, of topics that will um, become available. Uh, we'll hope to have that up uh, online on our website um, in the uh, in the next the first week of January. Uh, it'll run uh, largely the same format, where we will be covering um, a couple of only two classes for beginners training next year, uh, but then spend uh, most of the the months going over data loading. Uh, different types of uh, scenarios there. Also exploring uh, several of the uh, advanced workflows. Uh, we'll cover the new 16.2 new features uh, in one of the classes. And also uh, this year new, uh, we'll be doing some uh, introductory developers training. Uh, so I look forward to um, seeing what the new schedule is and I hope you'll be uh, able to, uh, to join that with us. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to start today. I have a couple of just uh, short questions for you, uh, just to give our trainer, to give Elena, the, uh, so she has some idea of, you know, kind of um, um, where you know what your background is. Uh, the first question you should see on your screen is, have you used the plat Transmore platform before? Uh, if you could just click one of those uh, answers for us. Okay, and um, most of you have not seen the platform before. That's great. Thank you for that. And then the last question is, um, if you give us some idea of how are, are you uh, using the platform? Are you using it directly as part of your research? Uh, are you supporting people in your company? Uh, will you be supporting others uh, in, uh, in uh, customers of yours? Uh, and again, just to give us you know, some idea. That's great. So um, most of you are going to be doing academic research uh, directly as part of your training, and um, we have a one trainer uh, in the group. So uh, super. Well, that's great. Thank you very much for that. Okay, so um, that's all I had to cover right now. Uh, the way this will work is that uh, we'll turn it over to Elena, who will go through the, uh, the, the basic uh, topics uh, and, and show you the Transmore platform. Uh, this is GoToWebinar, uh, Citrix product. Uh, there are a couple of uh, opportunities for you to ask questions. Uh, there is a question um, uh, buttons on your uh, dashboard, which you can um, enter a question in there. And uh, I will be monitoring it throughout the class. Uh, and I'll get back, to, you know, I'll get you fit in as soon as I We also, uh, you can also raise your hand. I'll be watching for those of you who raise your hand, uh, or you can just type a question in the chat window. So all three different methods uh, are available to you, and, uh, but for the time being, you're all muted. Uh, so if you want to be recognized, uh, get my attention, and uh, I will get you, um, get you uh, your question answered or, or whatever as quickly as I can. So with that, I will uh, turn it over to Elena, who will actually run the training class. Elena, over to you. Okay, uh, it's loading. There you go. Okay. So you see it now? Yes, it looks good. Okay. Uh, thank you, Rudy, for the introduction. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Elena Fedorovich. I'm from Rancho Biosciences, as Rudy has already said. Uh, the company that offers Transmart services, and that's how we are involved here. Today, we'll explore Transmart tools to make you uh, familiar with what it is and why it is good to use it. 
I will start with a brief uh, background information about what Transmart is, and then uh, I'll explain user interface uh, sections, including how to browse and search for studies. Oh, sorry, going uh, for studies already loaded into Transmart. Then we'll do a demonstration showing how to define cohorts to examine depending on what you want to study or explore, how to view summary statistics for commonly tested calculations, and exploring data sets with some basic plots and statistical tests. Uh, we'll learn how to export data sets to analyze them outside Transmart, and how to use some advanced workflows using specific examples from uh, these two geo sets that uh, were chosen for our training. Transmart is an open source community driven data management system for translational medicine. The initial version of Transmart was developed in 2009 by Johnson & Johnson and Recombinant Data Corporation. In February 2012, the Transmart platform version 1 was released under GPL license by Johnson & Johnson. The Transmart Foundation was established in 2013 as a public-private partnership the result of collaborations between scientists in the United States and the European Union. Since then, Transmart Foundation supports Transmart. Uh, but platform does not belong to foundation, but foundation facilitates platforms development and brings community together. You can find the information about Transmart Foundation and uh, the platform on the website, the link uh, uh, to that website uh, you can see at the bottom of the slide. Uh, version 1.2, a broad community effort, was released in August 2014. Uh, here on the slide you see the contributors to version 1.1, including pharmaceutical companies, university hospitals, organizations, and technology vendors. This is the version that we're going to explore today and uh, the one that you can use after class to practice using available for public, thanks to support of Transmart Foundation, uh, Transmart Instances. Um, Transmart is a data warehouse with data analysis and data exploration functions accessed through a web interface. It brings different types of data from phenome to genome together. Integrated in one platform, clinical and omics data are linked and can be analyzed within the platform together. Uh, this allows to use Transmart to store data as a data repository or library, reproduce and visualize the published findings. Uh, it allows to analyze data for target validation, biomarker discovery, toxicity, etc and to generate hypotheses and do its testing using Transmart advanced workflows. Transmart helps different collaborating groups or groups from different disciplines to communicate and share results to facilitate their research. It also allows to combine private data with public data. So anything can be loaded onto Transmart, basically. Um, Transmart is written in Java Groovy and other languages using either Oracle or Postgres as a backend database. It's not something that never changes. Transmart is being constantly improved. Its functions can be adjusted for researchers' needs and new features can be added using our interface. Uh, here's the uh, schematic representation of uh, the platform, how it's built. Uh, the computational organization of the platform is a web or client server. Uh, as you can see, uh, it has a web interface on the top, which is available to users for data browsing, uh, data mining, and analysis. In the middle, uh, behind that, stays Transmart Data Mart, which is uh, the backend database uh, in Oracle or Postgres SQL that keeps all the loaded uh, onto Transmart data. Before loading, uh, the data has to be curated. Uh, the low dimensional data, which is uh, clinical data, has to be properly formatted and standardized before loading. 
um, and um, we apply here ontologies, taxonomies, vocabularies, uh, syntactical standards uh, that the information loaded onto Transmark uh, to be uniform. High dimensional data or biomarker data, it's uh, gene expression or methylation uh, SNPs data, uh, RNA set data, and anything else. Uh, has to be formatted and standardized as well. The groups has to agree on the design of how the data will be organized in Transmark for the best result. So, to integrate data into platform, a good collaboration between scientists, clinicians, developers, service providers, and ETL engineers is crucial. It's a teamwork. Um, using this link uh, to Transmark Foundation website, uh, in the tab researchers, uh, you can find use cases, public data sets curated for Transmart, information about training, and various training and tutorial ma materials, including uh, 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 video uh, tutorials. Uh, also, on the Transmart website, if you go to the tab platform, you'll find uh, the four available uh, for public uh, Transmart instances that you can explore after class. There you can uh, do your own training and tests. Um, and uh, uh, here in the table, you have the information if you need to log in uh, onto the instance, the uh, uh, password and login are um, right here. Everything is described here. Uh, but uh, for the best performance, you have to use Chrome or Mozilla browsers. And now we're going to explore some um, Transmart features. So um, after providing login credential for the server, if you have to, you'll get into the landing page, which is the browser tab, as you see here on the screen, of the Transmart web interface. Its main components are uh, a text search field, active filters, program explorer, and a tab selection bar. The primary purpose of the Browse tab is to facilitate the selection of the appropriate study from the library of studies loaded on the server. The Program Explorer allows the browsing of study metadata. The elements of the Program Explorer are referred to as programs. Uh, you see these uh, programs are in green, named uh, classified. Each program contains one or more studies. By clicking a program, you uh, see studies and associated uh, with the studies items inside these programs. Sorry. So if we click, uh, for example, on the uh, program public studies, we see the list of the studies that are loaded uh, under this program. And um, here you see all the publicly available studies from Geo repository. Uh, if you click on the study folder, like Ask My Choi, I clicked for you, uh, on the right hand side you'll see the metadata, uh, which is a study description about study groups, uh, about the pathology, used to be studied, uh, organism, um, homo sapiens uh, here, analysis types, uh, publications if available, the link to that study, uh, raw data in the geo repository, and something else like um, the uh, date when, uh, when the study was uh, um, uh, published in the repository and um, the country where the study was done. Uh, queries and filters uh, can be used to refine the selected data uh, to just studies of interest. Uh, you can use um, uh, just all in the search field to select the category that you're looking for, or you can uh, use all as the whole to search for the categories and uh, type in um, SH 
keyword. Uh, I put here asthma, for example. Uh, then you click uh, to open a filter browser, and uh, you'll see the selected uh, category right here. So uh, chosen asthma, and uh, the studies that are connected to asthma are highlighted here. You can put also uh, the gene name uh, that you're looking for or something else to browse. Uh, now the um, uh, uh, tab selection bar that we're going to explore in our demonstration um, uh, consists of different uh, tools and functions available in the platform. And uh, for example, analyze uh, is used to view study data for subjects that you select based on criteria that you specify. Uh, there you can compare data generated for subjects in uh, different cohorts based on criteria and points of comparison that you specify. A sample Explorer, the next one, uh, is used to search for data sets of tested tissues and blood samples within categories such as tissue type, pathology, and test type, um, like um, expression uh, test type. Um, gene signature list. Um, Let's you to view definitions of existing gene signatures. Uh, we'll explore it in our demonstration and add new gene signatures that you will use in your analysis. GWAS is a plugin to view genome-wide association study data. Uh, it is used to view genetic variants in individuals to find those that may be associated with a trait of interest such as major disease. Um, at the moment, GWAS is already available in uh, Transmart uh, version 16.2, which was released this year, and uh, you'll have tutorials for that platform next year. Uh, you have to be an administrator to use admin tab. Uh, it is used to perform administrative tasks, such as creating Transmart user accounts. And utilities contains uh, submenus providing supplementary information or actions. And now we're going to proceed to our demonstration, where I'm going to demonstrate you basic features and functions of Transmart. Uh, we'll do hypothesis generation and test it using Transmart advanced workflows, and uh, do some additional workflow demonstration. We'll focus on two specific data sets from GEO repository. It's GSC27831 and GSC22138 to illustrate uh, a few of Transmart workflows. So uh, the data deposited into GEO has uh, been described in these two publications, um, PLOS One publication and um, publication in cancer research. Uh, this, uh, both studies are about uveal melanoma, discovering genes related to metastatic progression. Um, and uh, GSC27831 is related to PLOS One publication. The other one is related to Cancer Research publication. Um, uh, Gangemi uh, and co-authors um, show in their study that syntenin, or MDA9 gene, is associated with metastatic disease progression in reveal melanoma. Loret and authors uh, indicate that high PTP483 phosphatase expression correlates with metastatic risk in reveal melanoma patients. So our goal will be to learn how to reproduce the published findings quickly using Transmart. For that, we'll use the paper by Loret. And then we'll um, test a hypothesis that high PTP4A3 phosphatase expression correlates with metastatic risk in uveal melanoma using Gangemi's uh, data set. So we're going to apply the findings from one paper to uh, the different cohort uh, of the uveal melanoma patients from a, di a different uh, paper to prove that this could be true for uh, uh, another uh, group of patients with the same disease. And then we'll find other interesting associations between genes and metastatic melanoma progression in these studies. So now I'm going to um, uh, switch on 
to the instance where I'm going to do uh, a demonstration for you. Uh, let me open. Uh, do you see my screen? Yes, it looks good. Okay, so uh, here we are in the private, uh, our private training um, instance, and I'm going uh, to go to analyze right away. Go to public studies, and you see here we have uh, three studies loaded for our training. Um, you will know Anomagan Gemi and you will know Anomar Loret. Um, if I click uh, on this plus sign, actually, in Smart we call these uh, folders nodes. So every folder there will be node. So I click on the node of Uvila Melanoma Loret, and uh, we see that study tree, which is uh, a conventional format. It consists here of three nodes, uh, biomarker data, clinical data, and subjects. Uh, usually in Transmark, uh, almost every study has these three uh, nodes, but there could be other ones by desire or design of the study loaded on the Transmark as well. Uh, but uh, here you see uh, they're all present in these two, and because this is a specific data set, it has only subjects and the high dimensional data called VCF. So, opening the uh, nodes, uh, for example, by marker data, we see the name of the platform where the expression was done, and um, the high-dimensional expression data is uh, uh, defined here, uh, has a label um, of a helix, which is usually always uh, described the high-dimensional data. Clinical data has um, a subnode, clinical endpoints, we have here uh, uh, two cohorts of patients involved in this study, uh, patients with metastasis and with, uh, with metastasis and without metastasis. Uh, and we he have here uh, disease free survival in days. Um, the label green means categorical data and um, uh, labels in blue means uh, numeric data, which is very convenient. You know right away what kind of data you deal with, and when you do some analysis, you know what to choose for, for certain type of analysis. Uh, now, uh, on the right hand side, you see this big field which is used to uh, select uh, set, uh, subsets for the data analysis and do comparison. Um, here you can um, either drag in and drop the whole study node as we will do now, or you can choose subsets. We'll do that a little bit later. Uh, so, the next thing will go to summary statistics. And here you see the uh, uh, graphical representation of the summary, basic summary statistics for this data set, as well as uh, calculated statistics. So now, here we have the whole data set and we see that uh, the mean age of the patients in this uh, subset, uh, in this whole study, is 66 years old. Uh, we have median here, we have standard deviation, uh, we have number of patients here. Uh, then uh, we see uh, that we have 12, uh, 12 females involved and 17 males involved. Total number of patients, 29. Uh, by default, uh, the uh, summary statistics will uh, always show whatever you put into the comparison subsets. But that doesn't mean it cannot be changed. You can add here anything that you like from the study tree and do some basic statistics on um, categories that you want to. Um, if we go to the grid view, uh, we see the real data here. Uh, that is uh, in our study. Um, and uh, the grid view gives us the list of the data by default, again, um, usually the demographics. Uh, you see here sex and age. We don't have race in this study, that's why the field is empty. 
and we see the patient's ID. So uh, basically, this is very convenient to have because you can download the chosen data that you choose here in the grid view and load it on your computer and analyze it, where you will see not only uh, the averages when which you have in Transmart running analysis, but you can uh, see what each patient have here. Um, for in this grid view, you can remove or add anything you like um, by clicking the any any of these column tabs. Uh, you can um, remove from the list whatever is not uh, out uh, is not a scope of your interest. For example, uh, samples. Uh, it's an empty field. Uncheck it. Erase. Absent. Uncheck it. Um, we, may, we may remove subset because it's all subset one. Now we have this list and we can add something else, as I said. Let's add metastasis here. So we have now the list of uh, metastasis here, yes and no. And by clicking the export to Excel, you see you have uh, the uh, this file that you created, download it onto your computer, and um, this is how it looks like. So this data set that uh, you'll have on your computer and can work with it outside Transmart. Uh, there is another way um, to save information on your computer. Uh, could be the more full information. You can save uh, the whole data set there using data export. So when you go to data export, uh, you see uh, separated folders for clinical or dimensional uh, biomarker data and uh, uh, biomarker data, which is high dimensional. If you want to load both, check both boxes. If you want to load one, just check whatever you like to load and uh, click export data and um, you'll have it on your computer downloaded as well. I'm not going to do it now because it takes time. But um, you, you, you can practice with it later after this class. Uh, now we go back to comparison and um, I just wanted to show you how we can add to summary statistics using uh, different subsets here. Uh, let's create two subsets for this study. You don't need to put the uh, study here. You just take subsets uh, from the study tree. This, uh, I'm showing you here. Go to summary statistics. And now you see here the summary statistics from these two groups. You can compare the age. Um, uh, in the patients that do not have metastasis with uh, the age of the patients that have metastasis. Uh, you can uh, compare the race and um, number of patients there. And usually, um, if you have some specific um, uh, basic statistical analysis here with some specific data, uh, uh, it will also tell you if there is um, a significant difference between two groups. And now we're going to explore the advanced workflow. So uh, when we go to advanced workflow, we uh, click on the tab analysis and you see the list of analysis available uh, on the Transmart instance. So um, now we will also uh, go back to our laureate's publication uh, a statement that uh, PTP4 A3 phosphatase high level of expression correlates with metastatic risk in uveal melanoma patients. So we're going to um, use the uh, marker selection analysis to see if um, this gene, the phosphatase gene, will fall into the um, uh, marker category in the top list of genes that are uh, expressed differently compared to the other genes. So for that, we um, uh, I, 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 I'm leaving in comparison two subsets separated. And uh, I have to drag in 
into the box uh, the whole node for the high dimensional data. Uh, and then I just click run. So um, this analysis usually takes a uh, longer time. And while it's running, um, we uh, I'll show you another analysis in a parallel instance. Uh, again, uh, using the same... Uh, data set, we're going to look at the correlation analysis. I'm going to load the whole node here, go to advanced workflow, choose here correlation analysis, right here. Uh, correlation analysis deals with numerical uh, data. And um, uh, for that, I'm going to use the available in this data set numerical data that we can compare, which is, um, oh, I put the gun game in there, which doesn't matter in this case because these two data sets have the same information, basically uh, similar. Uh, we go to subjects, go to medical history, and um, uh, we'll look at the tumor characteristics here. We have here tumor largest diameter and tumor thickness. So we'll put uh, these two categories, uh, two numeric categories to compare. And uh, here uh, you can choose the correlation type that you want. is Spearman, Pearson, or Kendall. So we'll choose the first one. So we click Run and see if we have any correlation between tumor diameter and tumor thickness. So uh, we have uh, here two uh, histograms and a line, and um, we actually don't have any correlation between uh, the tumor thickness and tumor diameter, which uh, I think is mostly expected. Now let's see if our analysis is finished running. So it looks like it's finished um, and, uh, yep, we have a heat map here. And uh, it's a pretty, pretty large heat map. Um, so now, for those who are not familiar with heat maps, uh, I'm going to describe what it is and how it's calculated. So firstly, uh, we have two subsets here. They're separated by colors. Subset one is people without metastasis and people with metastasis. On uh, the... Uh, vertical axis of the heat map, we have probes and genes that are associated with these probes. And this is the expression if, uh, of these uh, genes that is uh, represented as, as uh, squared uh, colored boxes. So, which uh, means a z-score that uh, a variation in transmart of this score, uh, z-score is from minus 2.5 to 2.5. On the uh, uh, bottom axis, uh, on the uh, horizontal axis, we see the uh, patients that are associated with this particular um, uh, expressed genes. So, um, uh, these scores uh, uh, are calculated using uh, the formula uh, where we, um, I'll show you the picture, that I prepared for you. So uh, the z-score is calculated using log 2 of the expression value minus log 2 of the median here, divided by standard deviation. So Transmart doesn't use mean value, but uses median value. But still, it's a, a normal standard um, distribution here. Bell, uh, bell, bell uh, curved and um, gives us only values within this interval of minus 2.5, 2.5 z-score, uh, where we consider that uh, whatever is red is a um, high intensity or overexpression, and green score is a uh, low intensity of the expression, which we would consider the uh, low expression. Under expression. 
So, and um, below the heat map, at, uh, looking at the heat map, you see the differences between two cohorts. So, two cohorts definitely have um, the same genes expressed in different way. Some overexpressed, some um, uh, have low expression. And uh, below the heat map, in the marker selection analysis, we'll get a table uh, which ranks the genes based on the expression level. So, and um, because I used Gangemi study for that, uh, we don't see uh, the uh, what I wanted to see. Uh, actually, let's repeat it again, probably. Because it's uh, very important to prove and to visualize uh, the results of um, of the publication. So here is a very important button here, um, clear. If you click clear, it clears everything that you did before. And we'll put the melanoma laureate here. Uh, and, and then we run the uh, marker selection, which I think I'm not going to run because I ran it before. And I will just show you the results. So this is a table that came from <coughs> the laureate, um, sorry, um, the laureate data set, and we see that PTP three phosphatase is in the top five genes uh, as a marker, which proves uh, the results, um, the conclusions of the authors of the paper. And um, now, using these um, um, selected markers, we we choose these five genes, including this one, five top genes, and create a gene signature list. So um, I'll show you the gene signature list that I created before. And this is um, just, um, you type these um, gene symbols into the Excel file and save it in a text format. And there you will have the gene signature list that you're going to load into Transmart and use it. And um, so for that, you go into gene signature list, tap and click on a new signature. Type any name you like, let's say new signature, I'll call it like that. Click metadata. And here you feel the uh, information. Uh, most of this information is optional. You may feel this data here. Uh, for your convenience, or you may not. But uh, the one that is highlighted with red stars uh, is um, has to be filled. So we have to choose species, which is now case is Homo sapiens or human. Uh, we'll choose technology platform. Uh, as uh, you saw before in the uh, study tree, the platform is uh, has a name there, is defined. We have Ephemerix uh, GPL5 uh, 70. So I choose it here. Click Next. Uh, we have to choose here also uh, p-value cutoff. We'll choose it uh, 0, uh, 0.05. And um, what do we have in the gene signature list? Uh, there are two options here. Because we didn't use prop set symbols, we use gene symbols. We leave it as gene symbols, metric indicator. And the last one, you choose your file. So you click Choose File, and um, see, you download it from your computer. Choosing the file, I'm not going to do that, of course, uh, because I already have the gene signature list uh, here. So uh, this is my gene signature list that I'm going to use in a moment in the next analysis. Uh, if you click on it, you can look at it. You can look what is in there. You can see the metadata for this analysis that you filled. And uh, clicking on uh, the action, you also have a choice of editing this gene signature that you created right in Transmart. Or you can um, download this gene signature into Excel to have it on your computer. So um, now we're going back to analyze. 
and proceed to the next um, analysis. And this will be a simple heat map. So I will put um, the note here. Um, maybe you have questions at this, at this point. <clears throat> If um, anyone has a question, you can raise your hand uh, with the button or just type a question into the question window. It's in your dashboard. <clears throat> okay. So far, yeah, I don't see any questions. So, um, so that's okay. fine. Let's go further. So um, uh, we'll put here, actually, uh, subset 1 and subset 2, again, based on the metastasis. And we'll go to the heat map now. So we don't forget to load uh, biomarker, biomarker data. And now we're going to apply our gene signature list to uh, build a heat map to see, uh, to visualize uh, the expression of these uh, top five selected genes. So uh, here we have to start typing the name of our file. It's a gen, and it shows up. You don't need to uh, type it to the end. And then we click Aggregate Probes. So the algorithm will be applied and only representative probes will be used in calculations of the z-scores um, producing our heat, heat map. Then we click Apply Selection. Uh, here you can choose the maximum rows to display, but in our case uh, there will be predefined number of rows because we have a gene signature list only, but usually you can put as many as you like with some limitations. The more you put, the longer the analysis runs. So now I click Run. And it should be very fast because we have only uh, five genes here. In a moment, we'll have uh, our heat map, yes. And uh, you see here that um, uh, this is the uh, uh, cohort without metastasis and cohort with metastasis. This is our gene ptp 4 a 3 And we can say that um, this part is a little bit uh, different from this part. And definitely, this gene has more uh, overexpressed, uh, is more overexpressed in most of the patients in this um, subset. So probably we proved our uh, uh, the data of the authors again using this heat map. Um, next analysis I want to show you is um, the blocks, box plot with ANOVA. Um, ANOVA analysis is analysis of variance. It shows the difference uh, of the group mean values. And um, for independent variable, we'll use again yes no metastasis two cohorts. And uh, for high dimensional data, we're going to use just one gene, ptp for a 3 yeah. Apply selection and hit run. Uh, and we'll compare the expression of this particular gene in uh, two uh, subsets of the patients in this study. So here is our uh, graphical representation. Um, uh, you see here, uh, this gene has two probes in the platform. So both probes are the same gene. And uh, visually, we we can say that um, this um, phosphatase is overexpressed in uh, patients with metastasis compared to patients without metastasis. 
below we have uh, the statistical results from which we can uh, we will see the mean values for these two probes and um, I think we can uh, looking at p-value we may we may conclude that there is some uh, difference between uh, the expression of this gene in these two groups of patients. Uh, the next analysis, we're going to go through many of them today, if we have time, uh, is the survival analysis. So, uh, for survival analysis, we have three boxes. Uh, the first one is time. Uh, for example, here we use the survival time. In our data set, we have metastasis three survival in months. So we'll use that as our time uh, value. Uh, for the category, we'll use um, um, categorical data. And um, this will be uh, genetic characteristics. Uh, uh, the uh, status of the chromosome 3. So I will use two groups, uh, disomy uh, and uh, monosomy group. Uh, this censoring variable is optional, so we don't have it here, we don't use it. So we click run. And we have here the uh, kaplan meier estimate that um, shows us that um, uh, the prognosis for the survival in the disomy group is uh, much better than in the uh, um, monosomy group which has pretty poor survival rate compared uh, and below you have all the statistics that you want to look at. Then uh, the other analysis um, we can look at today. Is a Fisher test. Uh, no, let's say uh, waterfall test. So, um, waterfall is um, a test that visualizes uh, some continuous variables, um, organizing it by its value. So, it visualizing numeric data distribution. And for um, this analysis, we again use metastasis three survival as our continuous data. And um, no, we, we, we will use, uh, actually not, not that one. We'll use tumor characteristics. We'll use tumor diameter. So we'll put tumor diameter and uh, define the low range of the tumor diameter as uh, equal or less than 12 and the high range um, more or uh, equal to 17. Then we hit run. So here are our histogram uh, where on the x-axis you see all the patients' IDs. You can see which patients have uh, the lower uh, diameter of the tumor or the higher diameter tumor. In between uh, is the diameter between 12 and 17. Just a convenient representation of, of the data. Um, also, I want, um, yeah, um, probably I forgot to tell you that every uh, analysis that you run here can be saved on your computer. Uh, if you click uh, download raw R data, then uh, every plot and every uh, box with the uh, statistics will be loaded in, in, in separate files on your computer so that you can have it for your presentations, publications, and um, analyzing, having it on the paper for convenience. Um, so uh, also we can go through logistic regression analysis, which enables binary uh, variables to be modeled um, to predict the probability of the certain event depending on other characteristics. 
In our case, we want to look at um, the probability of having metastasis versus expression of PTP4A3 gene. So I go to analysis and choose logistic regression. Um, so uh, for independent variable, we have to drag in a numerical or high dimensional concept from the data set. So definitely this would be, uh, will be our uh, biomarker data. And uh, for the outcome concepts, we want to put um, metastasis status. So no yes metastasis. And we'll choose uh, again our gene. PTP for a, a3, apply selection, and hit run. Uh, so, by definition, the top concept of the first being will always be designed a value 1 as a success and the other value 0 as failure. Let's see. Uh, yes, here with metastasis is uh, our 0 level, and uh, these dots on the top are uh, variables for uh, no metastasis. Uh, on the plot, gray area is a confidence interval. Uh, uh, this plot is called uh, log plot. And here you see the row curve, which is used to evaluate the model performance. Uh, you see sensitivity on the y-axis and specificity on the x-axis, where sensitivity is proportion of well-classified uh, positive events and um, um, specificity is a proportion of uh, well-classified uh, negative events, de well-defined um, negative events. Uh, so uh, by looking at this um, um, coefficient, uh, we can say that this is a good model based on the logistic regression analysis. Uh, which uh, supports, again, the uh, um, conclusion of the authors of the publication. And uh, finally, uh, for the... We, we have a question, um, Elena. Yes. Mm, question is, can you do logistics analysis uh, for multiple genes? Uh, for multiple genes? Yes. Um, uh, yes, absolutely, you can do. Because you have this high-dimensional data, you basically can do what, or the whole set, which will be very heavy, I guess. Um, or uh, you can put other genes of interest, maybe uh, data signature list. Let's put the data signature list and see what happens. Actually, I didn't try it. I can try it now. Why not? Let's hit run and see what it gives us for um, other genes um, in this list. Probably it will take more time to run. No, it's running very well. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's what we have. Uh, I think that uh, now we have a poorer outcome for the sensitivity and specificity since um, a number of genes are involved. Did I answer your question? <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> yes, she says that, that that did work. That was it. Okay. That answered it. So uh, we have a few more minutes, I guess. And um, we'll go uh, and look at the scatter plot with linear regression as the last one in application to that Lorem data set. Just to show you how it works. Uh, so here we use um, for the independent variable the numeric data, uh, metastasis free survival. And for the dependent, we again use our gene. So I put the high dimensional data. But you can use gene signature, anything else. Uh, 
to be for easy again, apply and uh, run. Uh, take some time. Not bad. So um, here we will we will see if there is a correlation between uh, the gene uh, of interest expression and um, the metastasis free survival. So uh, looking at the plot and then at the uh, linear regression results, we see that R squared is pretty poor here and which tells us there is no real correlation between uh, not, not high correlation between metastasis free survival time and expression of the uh, phosphatase uh, gene. And um, because we finished with that uh, applying analysis to these two data sets, I wanted to show you um, a genomic browser, how it works. A genome browser is a pretty useful tool when we use it for um, the data sets that have the uh, um, um, so-called um, information in the VCF file formats. So this is the information on the uh, uh, genome alleles. And I will show you now how the VCF file looks like. We're going to use the data set uh, MSY012 uh, that has also some demographics in it. It has two cohorts, uh, people with disease and healthy people that we can compare in genome browser and uh, high-dimensional VCF uh, data. So I put the whole uh, node here, then we'll go to Genome Browser. Uh, so uh, before using Genome Browser, we have to always reset the browser just for best performance to be sure that it performs well. Then we drag in uh, oh, I didn't choose the cohorts here, so I better choose cohorts. Local disease here and healthy a subset too. Uh, so now we have to drag the high dimensional data into the field of the genome browser right there. The same as we do. Uh, the available for this data set from the VCF file uh, terms appear on the screen. And you see that um, for subset 1, we have quality of depth uh, uh, for subset 1. We have summary of minor allele frequency. Uh, we have minor allele frequency variants. Uh, for subset 2, we have also of the same categories. And uh, here how the, the for, for you to better understand what that means, uh, here how the VCF file looks like. So all the information on the alleles, on the uh, uh, minor allele frequency uh, and all the other things that connected to the uh, genome alleles are in the info field. It's one column where all these uh, categories are separated by uh, and um, it's very hard to analyze. And uh, this, in these columns, you have the information uh, for, the, uh, for each patient, right? So uh, Transmart allows us to analyze this information in a certain area of the genome, which you choose in that box, where you can identify the region that you are uh, particularly interested in, or you can type in uh, the name of the gene that you are uh, interested in to look at the region of that gene. Let's type here PARC7, which is Parkinson's uh, significant gene. Uh, I have to click, click uh, hit uh, enter, and information is coming. So 
here uh, we see for each category if there is data for this particular region of genome or not. And uh, we uh, clicking on any of these categories, we can compare uh, the allele uh, uh, information about alleles and look at this information. So we can see here that uh, compared to the subset one right here, there are only two uh, alleles connected to uh, subset one compared to subset two. If we click on that cross here, we'll see the table uh, with this SNP information. Uh, you can drag it by the corner. And uh, you, you see that um, this particular uh, has a, a reference SNP. And this is the alteration from A to G. You see the L count. You see the allele frequency here. Uh, and then you can open the same one in the other group and look at it too. So unfortunately, for now, a genome browser uh, sorry, uh, lets you only to look at this and visually compare data. Um, you have also, uh, in, in info field, you have a lot more categories than we see here on the screen. So the genome browser allows us to add categories. By clicking this uh, cross, we can do add VCF info and add some additional category that we want to look at. Um, let, let's put something, for example, DP4. If we don't have it here. Yeah, so um, it added uh, DP4 category from the VCF file uh, into our screen for subset 1 and subset 2, but definitely there is no any data in these two uh, categories for this particular region. So I think this is all that I wanted to show you today, and if you have any questions, you're welcome to. Uh, I will be happy to answer them. Thank you. Um, if you raise your hand, I can just uh, unmute you if you'd like to ask your question verbally, or you can type one into the question window. Anybody would like to ask a question or type in a question? I will remind everyone this uh, session is being recorded and both the slides and the, um, the recording will be posted hopefully later today on our website. Uh, we do have a question. Okay. Um, Weija? Hello? Yes, you're un unmuted. Yeah, Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I how to set uh, like a security level for the investigators? That's a, how can I share data, my data with others? Oh, how how can you share your data with others? Not everybody. Oh, I understand. So um, I would say that uh, this is kind of uh, two side questions. If you have the instance, uh, your private instance, or your organization has a private instance, right? And you're analyzing data there, and you want to show it to anybody you want to show it, you just share the uh, uh, login and password if you want to show everything. But if you don't, you can always um, uh, save any analysis you did, uh, uh, any data you wanted to save on your computer, and share the data that way. I Does see. It? I only can share locally, not uh, through the uh, trust smart trust system. Uh, if you don't have Transmart system. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're asking, if you don't have Transmart system, how you can share your data? No, man, what I'm asking, so if uh, I have the smart system, can I share data with a specific person, not the everybody in that group, or have to create a, like a common count? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying, if I'm share with somebody, I have to create like a 
account with that uh, which can be accessed by that person, right? Right, right. So, well, Transmart is a, is a basically um, you use Transfer Foundation and instances available there to practice. So, but you don't load it there. So uh, you can load your data only only somewhere that if you have Transmart instance, right? Or your yeah. collaborators have Transmart instance. So uh, you also need to contact people who will help you to load the data. As I said at the beginning, mm -hmm. it's a collaboration between um, uh, scientists and uh, engineers and curators. So because it has to be loaded <coughs> properly, I was not focusing on that. This is a big portion of Transmart. We were looking only on the tools available after the data was loaded onto Transmart. But if you you want to analyze data in Transmart, you have to have the instance in the first place. And when you have instance, then you can share the data only with people you want to share it. I see. How to set up a uh, sharing? You have like a settings, or for each instance you can click sharings. Um. Oh, uh, <laughs> well. Um, you mean if you are if you, if people you want if, to share the data are far away from you? Well, yeah, yeah. If you, have, if you have an instance with multiple users, I think the question is, you know, can you set it up where you have your own data, and then you can, sh but you want to share it with a specific other investigator in another group? Who also has access? Is that possible? I mean, right. I think right. the answer is yes. Right. Yeah. Basically, you have the same access to the data, but then um, if you create some analysis within the Transmart, um, at the same time they will not be able to look at it in if they log in into Transmart. Um, what you can do, you can share uh, your analysis that you're running on Transmart, either saving this analysis or uh, they can repeat your analysis themselves. Right, so you cannot uh, log in into Transmart from different uh, sites and look at the same running analysis. Mm -hmm. You can run it yourself, right? Uh, but what what uh, what we do sometimes, if we want to share what we're running there, we just uh, share the screen in the web, and and we show each other what's uh, what we're doing there, and mm -hmm. you know decide if this is proper or not. Mm -hmm. But definitely you give the credentials to people you want to share your data and um, they can repeat your analysis themselves. This mm -hmm. is how to share your data, right? I see. Uh, okay. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yes, yeah, but uh, you cannot uh, yeah, understand. But, uh, basically, you cannot uh, set up some like a uh, there's no settings. You can say, I want to share this data to mom, to who, who, and who. Just you have to give the people you want to share the credentials. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. OK, another question. Can, if I have my customized tools, can I add into that? Like, uh, for instance, we have some R tools. Can we add uh, these R tools into your analysis uh, menus? Or how to talk to the uh, transparent development teams to add in the modules. Um, can I repeat your question if I understood? If you have a, our own analysis tools, like right. let's say yep. R tools, can we yes. some R tools. add yes. tools into the pipelines um, right. or have to add in through the development teams? Right, right, exactly. So yes, um, you can add the um, R script that you, you created for a new analysis. But you definitely need to know how to load it into Transmart. And probably, if you don't have the ETL engineer that will help you with that, you can ask uh, for help. Or, I don't know, maybe Transmart yeah. for has but, that. Um, well, uh, yeah, I mean, there, obviously the loading data is one, one part of it. But if you have our tools, right, there are a number of ways you can do it. I mean, there is an API. And so you could build your own plugin or build even your own R, R scripts into the, the system. And I believe we have we had an earlier training course this year that you could look, review that. And I think it shows you how to do it today. Um, but in the new version, which will be released hopefully by the end of the year, or early next year, 16.2, uh, there is a, uh, a capability called Smart R. And again, there mm -hmm. are a couple of webinars to describe Smart R. You actually can build a workflow. 
um, with a new uh, your own you know own algorithm or your own R scripts and and create your own workflow uh, that you can build in. Uh, and again, there there's some training on that. There'll be more training next year uh, in this series on how to do that. So you know it's it's something that we're adding to the system, right? Some some additional capabilities. You can do it. If you're, you know, if you're really R savvy, if you know a lot about R, if you know, you know, R API, but, you know, there are some new tools coming early next year that you'll be able to do it, I think, a lot easier. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. It's and, and there, there are a couple of webinars, you know, that you can look at on their website that, that describe it. So it's called Smart R. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be, that'd be really useful for you, potentially. Okay, okay. great. Thank you very much. Okay, well... I'd like to thank Elena and thank everyone for uh, participating today. As I said, we will have this uh, recording up in, uh, on the system, uh, hopefully in a couple of hours. And um, please take a look at our website. There's a lot of information, a lot of recordings. Uh, we just had our annual meeting in uh, at the UC San Diego, uh, and we are getting all those recordings uh, loaded as well. So again, a lot of good information there about um, not just the the platform, but how people are using the platform in real studies uh, in their in their institutions. Uh, so again, I encourage you to, to look around and um, look at what's on the site. Uh, please feel free to contact any of us if you have more questions. And um, thank you again. Thank you, Elena. Thank you very much. You have all happy holidays. Yes. <laughs> happy holidays, everybody. Have a good end of the year. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.